Hey guys, welcome back. This is Jonathan Gardner covering Sergey Lang's Basic Mathematics. And this is section three of chapter three. Chapter three is real numbers, and this is powers and roots. So let's go back in time when we first talked about this notation, where we had some number and we put n as a superscript. What this means is you're basically taking a times itself, dot, 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 n times, okay? And that's somewhat related to what we do with addition and subtraction and things like that. So, or addition and multiplication. So multiplication, when you have n times a, that's the same as a plus itself n times, right? But this only works when n is an integer. So we're going to derive the rules for how this works with non-integer exponents. First, we're going to find some more rules. We have this rule a to the m plus n. Well, that's the same as a times a dot 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 m times and a times a dot 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 n times. So that's the same as a to the m plus, I'm sorry, a to the m times a to the n. Okay. All right. As before, if m and n are positive integers, that makes sense. Okay. Now, as part of the properties of real numbers, we assume that there exists a unique positive real number r such that r to some nth power, which n is an integer, is equal to some real number for every real number. So every real number has an nth root. I'll write that down. Every real number, is it positive? Every, yeah, a is positive. Every positive has an nth root. So r is r is real. Is r positive? Um, okay, r is real, a is positive, and n is an integer. All right? So we call this the nth root. And we write it down as a to the 1 over n, or the n root of a. So we write it down that way. You've already, you're already familiar with the square root. If there's no number there, then it's assumed to be the square root. Okay. All right, so we're beyond squares and square roots. We're doing any integer root or squares. All right, so here's theorem 1. Which states, if, so let a comma b be positive real numbers. Okay? And this says that a times b to the nth root, the nth root of a times b, is the same as the nth root of a times the nth root of b. Okay? And the proof is rather straightforward. It's very quick. So the proof looks like this. So we say r is equal to a to the 1 over n, and s is equal to b to the 1 over n. Right? This means that r to the n is equal to a, and s to the n is equal to b. Therefore, r s to the nth power is equal to r to the n s to the n, which is equal to a, b. All right? So r, s is the nth root of a, b. Okay? And that's the proof. Okay? Moving right along. The nth root can be further generalized to fractional powers. Let a be a positive real number. We shall assume without proof the following property of numbers. So this is fractional powers. So we're, we're moving past integers. We're moving to fractionals. Okay. So power one rule is for all x, y real, a to the x plus y is equal to a to the x, a to the y. And we're not going to prove this. We're just going to assume it. Okay. And then we have power 2. 
which says for all rational numbers x and y, all rational, not real, for all rational, not real, x comma y, I'm sorry, did I say they're real? Nope, they're not real. We have a to the x to the y is equal to a to the xy. Okay, And power 3, we have if a, b positive, a, b are positive, then a to the b, x is equal to the ax to the bx. And we shall now derive some consequences. Rather than trying to prove these, we're going to take some consequences of these. Let's go. So, first, I love this. What is a to the 0? What does that even mean? Okay, We're going to say a to the 0 is b. And then we notice that a is equal to a to the first power, which is equal to a to the 0 plus 1 power, which is equal to a to the 0 times a to the first power, which is just a to the 0 power times a. Okay, Thus, a is equal to b a. And so b, which is a to the 0, has a special property that when you multiply it, you get back the original number. And what number satisfies that property? Okay, well, let's do this. Let's multiply both sides by a to the minus 1. This is 1, and this is b, and that becomes 1. So 1 is equal to 1 times b. Therefore, a to the 0 is equal to 1 for all real numbers, except 1. Okay. 0 to the 0 is kind of meaningless. There's a contradiction there. We'll find out later. Okay, next we have, what is a negative power? So what does it mean to have a to the minus x? Okay, like before, we're going to say 1 is equal to a to the 0, and that's equal to a to the x plus minus x. So that's a to the x times a to the minus x. Thus, a to the x times a to the minus x has to equal 1. Therefore, a to the minus x is equal to 1 over a to the x. So we have another rule. All right. Example 3. Let's have an example, actually. I'll use a different color for the example. Blue. Example. So we have x is equal to 3. So a to the minus 3 is equal to 1 a to the 3 to the minus 1 power, because remember you're multiplying minus 1 and 3 together to get minus 3, and that's just equal to 1 over a cubed. So minus 1 means it's just the fraction where you move it to the bottom. So when you have a negative exponent, you move it to downstairs. Okay. So if we had 2 to the minus 4, that's equal to 2 to the 4 to the minus 1, or 1 over two to the four. So we take it and we move it downstairs. All right. So taking a negative exponent is taking the quotient. All right. What about when we have a to, let's say x is equal to some rational m over n. Okay. So m and n are positive, so x is greater than 0. m and n are greater than 0, obviously, because um, we're in least we're in the lowest form, right? So a to the m over n is equal to a to the m to the 1 over n. That's also the same as a to the 1 over n to the m, right? Which we can write as the nth, the nth root of a to the m or the nth root of a to the nth power. Both of those are the same. You might want to memorize these. They're kind of useful. More examples. More examples. So 8 to the 2 thirds. 8 to the 2 thirds is equal to 
That's just 8 to the 1 3rd times 2, or to the second power. So what's 8 to the 1 3rd? Well, something times itself 3 times equals 8. Well, 2 times 2 times 2 equals 8, right? So this is 2 squared, which is equal to 4. Okay. Uh, we could have done it the other way around. We could have said this is 8 squared to the third power, which would be 64 to the third power. And what number times itself equals 64 when it's times 3 times? Well, 4 times 4 times 4 is 64, so it's 4. All right, another example. So we have 2, or the square root of 2, to the 3 quarters power. Well, that's equal to the square root of 2 to the quarter power to the third power which, this is the 2 to the 1 half to the 1 quarter to the third, so it's equal to 2 to the 3 eighths, okay? Because you multiply all those together. 2 to the 3 eighths. What about the square root of 2 to the third power? Okay, well that is the square root of 2 times the square root of 2 times the square root of 2, which is just 2 root of 2, right? Or we can just write that if we wanted to as 2 cubed to the 1 half, or the square root of 2 cubed. Okay. Next example, we have 25 ninths. And we are taking that to the 3 halves. So that is equal to 25 to the 3 halves over 9 to the 3 halves. What does it mean to take um, 25 to the half power? That's the square root of 25, which is 5. And 5 to the third? That's 5 times 5 times 5, so this is 125. Well, the square root of 9 is 3. To the third power, it would be 9 times 3 is 27. So that's the answer for that. Okay. Now, there's a little side note. He says, what if we took rational, not rational, but irrational uh, exponents? What does 2 to the root of 2 mean? Okay. Now, we could be using rationals uh, non-rational, irrational numbers as exponents, and there is a way to do it and make it work. It's not easy, and to tell you the truth, it's not useful. So we're not going to do that as part of this course, but if you're interested in what this means, I'll just say something here. 2 to the square root of 2, to the square root of 2, that's the same as 2 to the 2 power, that's 4. So there's something interesting there, isn't there? All right, so you could figure that out on your own time. Right now, I'm going to talk about homework, give some hints on the homework. Homework is super important. Number one, express each one of the following in the form 2 to the k, 3 to the m, a to the r, b to the s, where k, m, r, s are integers. This is not unlike a problem that we did earlier, I think in section three, maybe, or maybe four, section four of chapter one. But in this case, you know that fractions like 1 eighth that's the same as 1 half times 1 half times 1 half, or it's 1 half cubed, or if you think about it, it's 2 to the negative 3 power. Okay, So you might get negative exponents. So it doesn't have to be positive, but they do have to be integers. Okay, number two, what integer is 81 to the 1 quarter power equal to? And there's a couple ways you can solve this. One, you can rack your brain and think what number times itself four times gives you 81. Or you can say this is the same as 81 to the 1 half to the 1 half. So it's the square root of 81, and take the square root of that. So what number times itself equals 81? And then what's the square root of that number? Okay. Number three, what integer is the square root of 2 to the 6th power equal to? And this one, what I would do is I'd say, well, the square root of 2 is 2 to the 1 half. And so it's 2 to the 1 half times 6. And so it's the 2 to the 6 over 2. And then simplify that, and you'll find the answer. Number four, is the square root of 2 to the 5th an integer? That's a question that you'll have to answer by expanding it out and seeing if you can put it as an integer or if there's going to be a factor that's a real number that's not rational and not an integer. Number five, the same. Is it rational? Is the square root of two to the fifth power rational? Is the square root of two to the minus fifth power rational? Figure it out, it's fun. Number six, in each case, the expression is equal to an integer. Which one? Oh boy, number six looks like a lot of fun. A lot of fun there. Uh, oh man, already I'm solving. The number D is interesting. 1 to the 5 fourth. Woo. Okay, express each of the following, number 7. Express each of the following expressions as a simple decimal. As a simple decimal. So if you remember, and this might be uh, a bit of review for you, but if you took um, multiplying uh, these guys, so multiplying, so if you have 0.3 times, I'm, I'm going to use a new notation, 0 0.3 times 0 0.3. 
So what you're going to do is when you multiply this, this is the same as 3 tenths times 3 tenths, which is 9 over 100, which is 0 0.09. So you have to remember to keep the decimal places when you multiply. Okay, So there's 2 to the right. So you say it's 9, and I go 2 to the right. So it's 0 0.09. Okay. Uh, if it helps, rewrite these as ratios. So 9 over 100 is the same as 0 0.09. I think it'll help to write it in the ratios. So if you can't see clearly what's going on, that's, that's a good idea. Number 8. Express each of the following expressions as a quotient m over n where m and n are integers greater than 0. Oh, good times. Good times. Yeah, more of the same. This should be fun. You should, you should feel like now powers aren't scary anymore, that you can do this, that this is... It's not a, these aren't really hard rules. We break it, we've taken powers and we've broken it down to simple multiplication, simple division, simple addition, you know. And there's a really, um, uh, I don't know, ethereal, I guess the right word for this is, is I was sitting in a quantum mechanics class and the professor asked, so how many eigenstates are there? Or some question like that, right? Really advanced mathematics. The board was covered with equations. Uh, using symbols that you have not seen yet, or if you have seen, you don't know what they mean. But you know, so we're all staring at the board, and you know, we see all these weird symbols, and we start solving the equation. And next thing you know, we're calling out, well, there's one, uh, there's another one, and there's a third one, and there's a fourth one. The answer is four. Okay, <laughs> so we've taken this really complicated math, we've broken it down to simple counting, right? And that was the right answer. Four was the right answer, or whatever the question was. So the professor's like, very good, you know, but. That's the amazing thing about math is we take really complicated looking things that look ridiculously complicated We break it down into simple things and simple things that even a kindergartner can do right so you can ask a kindergartner What's four plus four, you know, and they could sit there with their fingers and figure it out Well, what are they really doing? Well, they're taking eight and dividing it by two, right? Or they're taking four times two, you know, or they're taking two to the third power You know, so and that's that's amazing. Okay, number nine solve each of the following equations for X uh, so these ones, what you're going to do to get you started, um, let's see if there's one over here. So I'll just take number A. So we have x minus 2 cubed is equal to 5. And so what we're going to do is we're going to take the one-third power of both sides. Okay, so this says x minus 2 equals 5 to the one-third, or the fifth root, third root of 5. And your solution is not going to be x equals like 9 or something. It's not going to look like that. It's going to look like, you know, 7 plus the third root of 17 or something like that. That's what the solution is going to look like. That is obviously not the solution to this problem, but that's what it's going to look like. You have two terms, one that has an irrational part to it and one that is only rational. Um, so that's basically what you're going to do. You have to remember also that for odd powers, so when you have x cubed, that's the same as x times x times x. But for even powers, that's the same as x times x. So when you take x squared is equal to some number, then x can be plus or minus the square root of that number, whatever that number is, okay? But for cubes, you don't have to do plus or minus. It maintains the sign because you always have that last term. You know, for odd powers, you always have that last term, okay? And be careful of possible minus signs when extracting roots. So, you know, if you have a minus sign, move it downstairs. Then you might see better what you need to do. Next section is on inequalities, which is good fun. I hope you guys had fun with this chapter. I hope you feel like you're really, you know, gaining power and strength and ability. And you're doing some fantastically amazing math. And you can really amaze your friend. Okay, so take care. Bye-bye. Hey guys, thanks for watching this video. This video is part of my series on Sergey Lang's basic mathematics. You can click here to watch the rest of the videos in the playlist. You can click here to learn more about me, and you can click here to support my channel. Thank you so much. Bye-bye.